Hi everyone, this is Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, here for another uh, session of Ask Maureen. Uh, excuse me while I just try to get, for some reason I can't get live on, on Instagram where I really wanted to be today. So let's see why this is. On for a second. Anyway, does anyone have any questions for me? Because that's what Ask Maureen is all about. So please ask your photo questions. I know you have them. Let's see if I can, I don't know why it's saying I have a poor connection. I'm sitting next to the router. Here we go. So we're live on Instagram too. So thank you so much for joining me for this uh, end of October Ask Maureen, the place where you can ask all of your questions relating to photo preservation, identification, sharing, digital things, whatever you have a question about with photographs, this is the space for you to do it. So please put it in the chat. This is live on Facebook. It should be live on Instagram and uh, it is also live on YouTube. So here's the thing. Uh, I hope you are listening to my podcast. Uh, this week on the podcast is Dustin Perry and Dustin Perry is a ghost hunter who uses historical images, he does historical photo research to find out things about whether or not these places are haunted, believe it or not. Uh, but it's fun to talk to someone and it's part of a series I've run on the podcast about individuals who use photos for other types of jobs other than genealogy. I was a photo researcher for a very long time and for textbook publishing and other things. And so I am aware of all kinds of people who are using historical photos and historical photo research for things other than family history. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, he is, Dustin Perry is great. Um, he's actually pretty famous. He was on the series Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International. And he lives locally to me, which is cool because Rhode Island is the home of ghost hunters. This is where those two guys uh, were from. Uh, and so that's kind of cool. Now on the podcast in November, I have uh, a woman from the Victorian Albert Museum talking about handbags and the history of handbags. And that is a part of a series I'm running on little things that can make a difference to understanding the story in your family photograph. It's actually pretty cool. And she weighed in on a photograph I have in my collection, not my family collection, because I don't have that many photos, but my research collection, which is pretty cool. Don't forget, I'm here if you want to ask questions. I am here on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, and I'd love to hear from you. I'm going to wave to someone on Instagram. What else do I have to Oh, also on the podcast in November. This guy, Louis uh, Takis, has done an amazing job uh, researching the Ellis Island photos and passport photos of people who pass through Ellis Island. And you will not believe the clues that this man has studied. I am in awe of his research skills and his ingenuity. On a, a sort of sad note, I have to say um, that Joe Manning of um, that project researching Lewis Hine photos. Unfortunately, I just found out last week that he died in early May and I, that we never met because of the pandemic, um, but I did consult on his projects on and off for maybe 20 years. So I'm quite sad about that. So that's not so great. Uh, before I jump into questions, questions, because I see many of you are still joining us. I wanted to show you a photograph, okay? Uh, here it is, can you see it's in the glass still? And it is a young woman and you can see in the upper right hand corner uh, that I paid $24 for it. This was at Brimfield a couple of years ago and that there's a label on the bottom, tells me who she is. But the coolest part is what's on the back. Yeah, that's her family history or her family. So it's Hattie Lavinia Henry, daughter of John Henry and Margaret Foy. 
and she was married June 18th, 1868. And then there's a list of all of her children and when they were married and who they married on the back of a photograph. So I obviously could not leave this image. At Brimfield, no Siri Bob. This was a few years ago. So I've been trying to poke around on this and see what I can find. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jim Kelly, spirit photographer, just joined us on Facebook. That's interesting, Jim. I'm going to have to check you out, see what's going on. Uh, Brandon put in a question. He says he got an old photo album from his grandfather, mostly unidentified photos, I think from the 1890s, but has some tintypes in it as well. Uh, do I do photo consultations for a whole album? You bet I do, Brandon, and I give you discount pricing. So please email me at photodetective at maureentaylor.com and we will work on something um, to make it possible for us to talk. I love working on photo albums. I have this new course that I've been working on. It's not quite ready to launch yet, but it will be. Uh, and the question to those of you here is, it's a three-hour course. Would you rather it be three hours in one day? or one hour, three days in a row, or one hour every every week. I'm, I'm having trouble with that. So if you wanna weigh in on that, I would love, 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 love to hear what you have to say. Three hours all at once, one hour a day for three days, or one hour a week, um, or one and a half hours. It might actually be more than an hour. Um, because uh, one of the options for signing up for that course is uh, the VIP level, which is where I analyze your photo album live um, for a very interesting price. One of the questions that was submitted on Instagram was, how can we determine if the frames of old pictures hold value? Um, they are not currently on display due to age, but who, what type of photo would I contact to determine if the frames are original to the area of the photo or not? So I do have a couple of links for you. Uh, I did find a guy on YouTube. If you just give me just a sec, I will share that with you. It's in here somewhere. Here it is. Um, here's one. So, I mean, I've looked at a lot of frames in, uh, my time working on photographs. So how do you tell if a frame is an original antique or not? Well, you turn it over and you look at the connection. So in the case of Hattie Lavinia Henry, you can see that these are nails. Now these are sort of modern -y. No, they're sort of old nails. Sometimes you see little tiny rusted nails. It looks like somebody opened this and then closed it up again. And you know what? I can't wait to take this apart because sometimes it's a picture under a picture and that would be super cool. The other thing is you look at the frame and the aging of the wood. You look at the class. Like these are sort of modern class compared to Hattie's picture from the um, 1860s. 50s even maybe it's a copy i need to take it apart to really get a good look at it um there was another person i found now how much are they worth any antique dealer could tell you how much they're worth I keep waving oops sorry i haven't been showing the instagram people so here's hattie and you can see the ring light i have going and there's the back with a, of course it's reversed because it's instagram with a list of her and her husband and when they got married and then a list of all of her children. But also I was showing the back of the frame. You're looking for aged woods, your wood, you're looking for the type of nails or clasps. You're looking for the type of eye holes or something else. And old wood, this is an old frame. I can tell that it has little holes in it. Um, it's aged. This is an old frame, but not a particularly fancy one and not one that I you know, would think would have any value, but some frames do. So there's that link. And I have one more link to share with you about, um, can I copy that, copy the link? This is a guy who runs an antique shop out of Arizona. And he did a nice little YouTube video on that. So the answer is it depends. It depends what type of frame it is. It depends, um, it depends if it's got aged wood. It depends uh, lots of things uh, having to do with frames. So frames are very interesting. 
Oh, let's see. Janet said that she inherited albums and lots of pictures of her great aunt's husband's family. So let me get that right. Great aunt husband's family. He was an only child. She built out his family tree and then connected the pictures to the person on the tree. And there are still many with no names. They're really beautiful. And then she created a Facebook family page for the Elliott family and added all the pictures with them without names. So far, no one has joined to claim kin. That is the problem. I have a closet full of photos without names on them and some with names. But while I see these groups on Facebook where they have phenomenal success connecting images with family, I cannot seem to find the people to connect these with. There we go. Ida Plumador. She's still on my desk. Or here are my two personal favorites. I wrote a long blog post about them. Um, the Glassmere Brothers of Pennsylvania. I even wrote to the Historical Society. They don't seem in Pot Pottersville, uh, Pennsylvania. Nobody's seen Pottsville. Nobody seems to want these two guys. Uh, so I guess I'll try again. Um, I would say put the images, uh, you put them on Facebook, you put them on Ancestry. I would try to put them up all over the place. Um, you could, if you knew where the great aunt's husband's family lived, try to connect them with a historical society or a museum. So I don't know, something's happening over on Instagram. It keeps bumping in and out. And I'm not sure why that is because I have a great connection. Um, I am helping my husband's uh, mother's cousin with this huge collection of documents and images uh, from a small town in Vermont. And we contacted uh, the Vermont Historical Society and they had claimed that they were quite interested in the whole collection. It's also town papers because they were town clerks. So I was stunned when I saw how much and how uh, many documents there were relating to the time when these guys were the town clerks. The links are posted on my Facebook page and on YouTube uh, for the person on Instagram that was asking. What else do I have for a question? There was a woman on Facebook, Lorraine, who posted an image and said it was her father's father and her father never knew him and that she's trying to find out more about him. So I did a little bit of research on Google. That's my first step if it's somebody famous. And this is a broadside, meaning it's a single sheet, looks like a single sheet of paper or maybe a little booklet. It was songs. I Google it and then try to find out um, if I can find out anything about the person. I'm thinking maybe it was a stage name even because I can't find anything on this guy. I can't find a copy of the a songbook, but that's with a general Google search. That's not a deep dive into archives like using Archive Grid or the Internet Archive or anything like that. Um, I did have this client a couple of weeks ago. I had a group portrait and there was a girl in the second row and she was holding this songbook. And I was able to actually find that songbook online, which helped date the photograph, which was fantastic. Uh, I love those hidden clues. So another question I had, and please put your question in the chat or on Instagram. I'm just going to scroll down and see if anyone had any other questions for me on Instagram. Nope, I just waved at a bunch of people. Is a broken gesso frame worth repairing? Hi, Lauren. Um, I'm not sure I want to hang it even if I can repair it. So I am going to put a link after we're done talking uh, to, oh, here it is. It's, I'm going to put a link to this guy. He was on the, um, give me a second. If you haven't checked out this guy, you should. He was on the podcast a little while ago. And he makes reproduction cases and frames. 
And I really want to get one of those uh, 19th century frames from him. They are beautiful. I bought little tiny ones that for Christmas tree ornaments and I sent them to some people. But I really want one of his large reproduction cases. This is modern day antique for the folks on um, Facebook. And he, I mean, on uh, Instagram. And he is, let's see if I can find him. I'll put a little at sign. At. Learn something new every day. Modern day antique. See if that pops up with him. Uh, so those are great, Lauren. I mean, if you can buy a reproduction, I don't know if you want to replace it or not, or if you just want to repair it. It could cost more. Uh, to repair than it would be to buy a new one. But anyway, check out Modern Day Antiques. Um, Steve was on the podcast about a year ago. And I love, love, love what he's doing. Love. He made a whole bunch of reproduction cases for Harvard University so they could not display the originals because they had copies made of some photographs. So they put those copies on display in period cases. So they look like the original, but they're not, um, which is pretty cool. So the question was, um, this person wrote in and said that they have a lot of old photos that are really small in size, like two by five by 2.5. And they wanted to know what size they should scan them at, what resolution. Lauren, I really need to see it. You need to send a, you need to post an image of the frame for me to see what it is. So I don't know, don't tell you to not repair it. And it's a valuable frame. So put that in the chat somewhere. If you can share an image of, of that frame, just snap a photograph, Lauren. Uh, so the clarity of older photos depends on the photographic method. We know that, right? We have lots of different photographs in, um, you know, in our collections. But when I have small photographs and I need them for publication, I scan them at a, I scan at a minimum of 200, 600 DPI, but I would, prefer to scan them at 1200 DPI. If you could, sometimes the editors come back with me and say, rescan them and at 200% scale. So if you scan at 300 DPI and it's a hundred percent scale, then it's a one-to-one -one ratio. The image looks best the same size as the original, but I have better luck with a 200% and higher end resolution. How can you, how high, how large can you go with a reprint? It depends on the quality of the image. Like I would not want to enlarge a 1970s print on that linen resin coated paper. Uh, I would scan the negative in that case and at a high resolution and see how big I could make it. But a daguerreotype, there have been case studies like the Cincinnati waterfront daguerreotype where I mean, they have blown that thing up to see the detail and it doesn't lose, it doesn't lose any quality whatsoever, the larger it gets. It's truly amazing. Daguerreotypes are amazing. Um, I just went to the Daguerrean Society Conference last weekend, no, not this past weekend, the weekend before, and it was fabulous as usual. And I learned a bunch of stuff and I have some more videos to watch and I might do that this afternoon. Um, always learn something new. Every time you think, you know, everything about photography, there's always something new. It's a complicated subject. Someone asked, uh, well, we actually, someone in, in on YouTube asked, is the program for facial recognition that would identify older photos of people, people you have of newer photos? So the family search um, compare a face app is what everybody's using these days. So try it out uh, and see if that works for you. Um, it works for some some people and not for others. I uh, somebody asked about the storage of glass slides. So glass slides they come in two categories. There are dry plates and wet plates. So the wet plates were first, and then dry plates were mass manufactured. What you are looking for is broken glass and cleanliness. You don't want to clean the emulsion side of these images. You could pull off the negative. Um, if they're in good condition, then these materials are pretty stable. I would put them in an acid and lignin-free sleeve, uh, paper, so like a car 
cardstocky sleeve, something a little sturdier because it's a glass negative. And then you always store them vertically rather than flat because if you store them flat, then it's building up weight on the bottom glass and it can break. Uh, if you have a broken glass plate, it used to be you had to sandwich it between two pieces of glass and then use conservation quality tape. It turns out there are now methods for actually repairing the original glass plate negative. Conservatives have that, that capability now. Uh, and then what else? Oh, you can digitally, you know, get rid of that crack. You can do that as well. Uh, one more question. We have Eileen Bernier. She says, I have a photo, I think, of my grandmother's brother. He has a uniform on, which appears to be a Salvation Army one. Is there a way to find out if it is Salvation Army or not? He died at the age of 15, so the photo would have been taken between 1881 and 1896. That's a 15-year gap, Eileen. I would love to see that picture. You can Google image it and see if you can find a match for the uniform. Uniforms are really tricky. So was he in a band? Is it really Salvation Army? Is it some other little group that, that was... Um, available that he was a member of. Uh, there were lots of those little groups that had uniforms to sort of unify the, the crowd. Uh, that's what I would say first is I would images.google.com and I would do Salvation Army um, 1890 uniforms, something like that to see what you can find. Uh, let's see. Any other questions for me? This is a monthly occurrence, the Ask Maureen, and then all these questions and links get turned into a podcast the month after this. But I'm always looking for questions. Everyone has a question. There are no stupid questions. And really, make me hunt for the information. I love it because I learn something new every time from all of you. So you can send me an email and I'm going to put that in the chat. MaureenTaylor.com. Send me an email with your questions. One other person had a question, digitizing negatives, what would you suggest? Reproduction, photography, or scanning? I would totally scan. Um, scanning your negatives is something you should do. You get a much better quality than you would with reproductions. Reproductions is like another generation of removed from the negative, but a scan is a one-to-one. -one. If no one has any other questions for me, I am going to end all these. I want to thank everyone for joining me again on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I finally figured out how to set up my little new ring light um, so that I'm staring right at it, sort of, at the same time I'm talking to you. Oh, I do forget to move things between you. Um, what is a good scanner? Uh, Janet, I have always used Epson scanners. They were early in the industry, but there are lots of good scanners. You just want something that is. Uh, affordable and that scans at a high resolution and most of them do um, see what's on sale but I love my Upsons um, I've had several over the years and I think they're great I even have one that's portable that I just put in a tray and take with me so anyway that is it for this episode of Ask Maureen this is the October 2021 edition I can't believe I've been doing this for about a year please send me your questions on photo identification or uh, preservation or sharing or digital stuff. I hope that you watched my webinar last week with the members of the Family History Metadata Working Group where we talked about metadata standards. I will be giving two talks at uh, the upcoming Roots Tech in February, yay. Uh, one on metadata with Rick Voigt. We're both volunteer members of the Family History Metadata Working Group and a three-part uh, two part, I think it's two parts, two part class with Nancy Desmond um, on photographs. So thank you all very much for joining me. Have a great day. Take care.